Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new playthrough. In this session, this series, we're going to be playing uh, at least the beginning parts of the campaign of Lobotomy 2 Manhunt by Titan Forge Games. Uh, we're going to be playing a full four-player game. It does recommend that to, even though you're, if you're playing with less, like if you have two players, you should play two characters each, etc. It's kind of optimized for that. You, could, you can play three, but we're going to do the full four and see how it goes. Now, uh, before I get started, I'm going to tell you two things, two very big caveats about this. The first one is I am playing completely blind in this, and I'm going to tell you why. I started reading the rules, and at one point it said, Stop reading the rules and go into the introduction scenario. It teaches you how to play. So I said, yeah, that's a good experiment. Let's try that. Let's see how well this works, right? Is this going to be able to teach me how to play uh, in a, an effective fashion while playing? I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to see if we can pull that off. Anyway, I do have the introduction set up. We're going to go through some of the components and stuff that I've already done. I've, I've basically got everything up to this point where it says S-A, S1A, the first blood. That's, the clo that's as far as I've gotten so far in the setup. Now, within that, it's told us to do a bunch of things. And I, I did like this part here. Now, uh, before I get into the details, I do want to talk about the big elephant in the room with this game in and of itself. Okay. Now, uh, I have a lot of people in my life that suffer from mental illness or have and maybe don't anymore or maybe still do. Uh, very People that are very close to me. Um, but, uh, well, there's no but there. I have people in my life that are suffering from that. However, uh, this game is dealing with some sensitive themes for some people uh, in the form of, of insanities, phobias, uh, disorders, neuroses, things like that. And your characters are in an insane asylum. They are uh, institutionalized for whatever reason. And they're, they're, they, wanna, they have to break out of this institution. Now the institution itself, and this may be real, this may not be, it could be all a delusion, is, are filled with de not demonic creatures and they're going to basically destroy the world if you can't escape and warn the, the people of the, the planet, right? And uh, our characters take on various um, like modern day tropes, uh, characters like uh, one's kind of like Wonder Woman, one's kind of like Gandalf, one's kind of like, uh, um, you know, uh, what's the name for, from Breaking Bad, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, just very popular uh, tropes. And uh, they believe that there are these people and they believe that they're, the stuff that they have are, are weapons of power and things of that nature. And it may be true, but it may not be. However, again, I just want to say that if this is something that is, makes you uncomfortable or um, makes you feel marginalized in any way, please avoid these, this series. Uh, and it's not that um, I'm, I'm not doing the typical, well, if you don't like it, don't watch it. I'm just saying if it makes you feel a certain way, please avoid this one. This one does deal with these themes. And so I just want to make that very clear before we, we go into the gameplay. I want to be sensitive to people who may be suffering from some of these experiences directly and may feel that this might, um, I don't know, uh, make them feel a certain way. And now for me personally, and I've been playing games that and horror movies and everything that deal with madness and, and insanity. I mean, every Cthulhu game I've ever played deals with that. And I, I personally don't find it uh, bothersome to me. It, it doesn't really make a statement about mental illness. It's just a game, right? And it's not trying to make a statement. It's just trying to be fun. And in this case, it's basically a, a very cleverly um, developed dungeon crawl. Now, I also had the first lobotomy, which I played on the channel as well. And I have to tell you that I'm, I, based on what rules I read, it looks like they cleaned up a lot. Because the first game, while well, was really interesting thematically and everything, had some serious rule issues. And I, I hope that they've cleared them up in this one. And if you're interested, you can go back and watch some of my gameplay, old gameplay of Lobotomy. I have a couple different uh, episodes. I usually ran them around Halloween. So with that said, uh, again, this is the final warning. This is going to be spoiler-filled. I am going to be doing the campaign because that's where I saw if you're going to be doing the campaign, start here. Don't, don't finish reading the rules yet. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. So uh, we're going to try that and see how it goes. And again, I'm going to be spoiling what that campaign looks like. So... So the two things as I'm about to start officially is if this theme, if the thematics of this bother you in any way, I completely empathize and understand. Please don't proceed. If they don't stick with me, it is a fun game. It's a dungeon crawler. I like those storytelling campaigns. I like that too. We'll see how it goes. 
Uh, and then again, I'm going to spoil the heck out of this. So with that being said, let's get going with, I'm going to talk you through the first part of the setup that we did and talk through some things. And I'll reemphasize as we begin to read and investigate that this is a completely blind playthrough. I literally stopped reading the rules where it told me to and started looking at this book. Okay, so it says, S1, the introductory scenario. It says, uh, where am I? This isn't my home. What's going on? Oh, oh, oh no, the hospital is starting to come back to me whether I wanted to or not. Okay, the introduct introductory scenario will help you quickly learn how to play Lobotomy 2 Manhunt while you try to escape the aberrant asylum that you find yourselves in. Like a horror novel, this scenario is in a series of chapters, starting simply with the basic concepts and slowly getting weirder and more complex until the horrific climax of your story. At various points during the game, you will do something, or have something done to you, that moves the overall story on. At these points, you'll be directed to read a new chapter of the scenario, which you will find in this book with the chapter code given. You should read the indicated chapter to all players unless instructed otherwise, and follow any instructions given to you. This is how new parts of the map, new threats, and new opportunities to escape all reveal themselves to you. You may also be instructed to reveal story event cards and reference cards. Now I'm not going to read everything to you, I'm just giving you the setup and how we're going to get going. Uh, and then we're going to get into the actually uh, the, the introductory scenario next section which actually does start the scenario. And I'll show you the initial setup of this as by the time we get to here. So basically this tells us to pick characters. This is another, this section right here I want to point out. This is very interesting. It says each player should read the following reference cards. And it says in the Lobotomy 2 rulebook. So first error, first error. It is not in the Lobotomy 2, 2 rulebook. And it is not on the last pages. It is in the last pages of the scenario book, the one I have in front of me. And I'll show you that right now. It wants us to go through S, S1, RC, spaces, lines, sight, and movement. Uh, then the gameplay, lines of sight rather. The gameplay round, player actions, meds, and junk. Now, I have looked at those already, but uh, I'm just going to quickly and briefly show you what that looks like. But again, this is the first rulebook error I've seen. It is not in the rulebook. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this. Now, as we go on, continue on here, it tells us what items, we're gonna, the starting items we're going to have. And uh, we'll go over our characters in a minute, but this just that's what this shows you right here. Then it shows you what the three major stats are, strength, dexterity, and wisdom. We have another stat called imagination, but I imagine that comes into play later. Uh -huh, get the, what I said there. Um... And, you know, basically the higher your score, the better you are. And then we're going to get all meds into a med bag, and then each character should receive one. We haven't done that yet, and then we're going to place all tokens into a junk bag. Well, we've done that. Here's the junk bag token bag, or junk, junk token bag, and here's the med bag token bag. When we show off our players, I will pick their med bag token. Okay, and then uh, we're going to shuffle weapon cards. We've done all that. We've shuffled the decks. I'm probably going to give them additional shuffles as we first use them. Uh, and then we're going to put out the first map tile, which I've done this. That's this, which basically we placed a bunch of doors on. And then we placed our characters, our four characters, in the S's where they, they tell us to start. Uh, then it says, after we picked our characters and give them... It doesn't say anything about giving them any um, um, disorders yet. So I haven't done that. And I don't know if I'm supposed to yet or not. I'm following, the, I'm following what this says. This may come in a moment, right? It says it builds on. So I'm not going to try and get ahead of myself, okay? After we picked our characters and done that, we're going to reveal story card S1EC, which I do have. There are uh, several cards that introduce the scenario. This is S1EC. We haven't revealed it yet, but we will in a moment. Just trying to get you caught up. And that is, you may now play your first round remembering to watch out for triggering events of the story card. Good luck. Now, we're going to go check out uh, SR, uh, the S1RC in this book. Again, um, I'm just going to pop over to here. We'll show you this. And here is what I'm talking about. This is not the rule book, this is the scenario book. So, this talks about spaces and what a space is. I got that figured out pretty much. Space is defined by walls and doors. Basically, you can't pass through them, but monsters can pass through closed doors. Line of sight. Uh, unless stated otherwise, attacks and other uh, actions need line of sight. So you can see how they've outlined it for you. I've, I've read this already, so uh, we won't go through it again. But line of sight is blocked by solid walls. It's also blocked by closed doors, etc. Um, we can unblock line of sight by taking things down, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, line of sight goes through open doors and breaches in the walls, which is what I was just basically saying. So, then we got up here, we have movement, how we move. Pretty straightforward. We cannot move. It says, um, 
it gives you an example of movement or line of sight here rather and then we go into movement and it says um, in normal movement certain restrictions apply uh, nothing character monster can move can oh what it says there's nothing but that's not true we, we're we suffer through that characters cannot move through closed doors they must uh, use part of their movement action to open the doors and you're gonna get three actions a movement action ha is worth two movement points one of those movement points can be used to open a door okay uh, monsters can move through closed doors characters cannot move where there are two or more monsters in the space so that means we have to deal with them with ranged uh, stuff or until they come to us if there's just one monster in your space you can leave under certain conditions um, or costs if the monster has got this icon this fleeing icon uh, flee rules shown on the monster card and just give an example of monster card there's the fleeing rules right there it's all very it has a lot of symbology in it it says the blow image shows how you can move. I totally get it. It's all good. We cannot move diagonally, by the way. It has to be orthogonally, which is shown here. Then we're going to go on to reference card, the next reference card, which is the gameplay round. We'll probably have this one open fairly often if we're not reading through our scenario. Which basically says we're going to take the player's phase. Everybody's going to get to go, starting with the character. The first char character token and going clockwise. Characters get three actions. We talked about that. Uh, they may spend uh, to perform their actions yada yada there's a lot of things you can do in the game lots of different actions you can pick up stuff you can trade things you can there's all kinds of stuff and this gives you kind of the round of the player uh, the reference card here is the player round maintenance action we're going to pass the token that's usually the first thing that happens in the maintenance action now we're not going to do that in the first turn uh, character action phase starting with the character with the first action the first player token and going clockwise characters get three action points they may spend to perform their actions. We'll get to those action points in just a moment because it says right there, 3B. Um, so we got to get ahead to that. Uh, basic and elite monster action attack phase. Now, um, basic and elite monsters, they go all at the same times. You can kind of mix and match what order you take them in, but they're going to move and do what they do. And they will attack all players in range or, you know, if they're in the same space. Then we have uh, this reference card here, which is the round. It shows uh, a little more detail on the round, the hunt phase. Move the hunt master. So this is basically maintenance action. We talked about that. Character actions, monster phase, the hunt phase, the boss will move. This might, it's not going to happen right away for us in this scenario. Uh, the boss monster phase, or if there are any boss monsters, they're going to go. And then the basic and elites. And then we're going to spawn. And then we're going to have a basic and elite attack phase, attack phase at the end of the round when all the monsters are, or have already done their movement. Okay, then we're going to go to this one. This is all the different player actions, and we'll have this open for sure. You can actually perforate these and take them out of the book. I feel weird about that, but I might do it, just because I think these sheets are very valuable, and uh, I'd like to have them handy. But it says a uh, reference card uh, RC3A, and it basically goes through all the different actions. Trade action, loot action. A loot action is interesting. It, that's a junk token. Uh, we can draw on everything, but we have to be in the right situations. Uh, move actions are pretty straightforward. Then we have some more detailed actions here. A search action is when we are on a locker or something like that. That's when we use our imagination to determine what we find in there, right? Because it may or may not be real. Um, this reference card is the, all the, again, more details of the player actions. We're going to have all of this out with us so we can reference it. And then this one is just how meds work and how uh, the junk works. And it, we'll, we'll go over that as we go in the gameplay. But I just wanted to show you how they broke that down. Then there's this, uh, how, what the monster cards and what they mean will be an item cards, what they mean. You can see there's a lot of reference cards for this. Searching lockers, monsters, etc. We'll be pulling these out regularly, which means I may cut them out of the book. I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm probably going to do it because I think it makes a lot of sense. And then we're going to get on to bigger, emboss, bigger uh, items and then just references, right? Different references. But anyway, I do like that they did that. I thought that was very, very effective. Um, they, they chose to uh, block it out that way and give you these references while you're starting to learn a new game of Lobotomy 2. Okay, well, I did choose to butcher my rule book, or sorry, my scenario book, and cut out all the reference cards. I think that will be handy for us, especially being that I'm playing this as it's intended as a blind playthrough. Okay, so next up we are going to go through our characters real quick. I'll show you the map board that we have out and the few things we have on it right now. Those will get added to soon, I believe. But here's the map and our four characters. You can see our minis here. This is uh, Ian McFellow, Joanna, Joanna Justice, Brian Hotridge, and Harmony Bishop. And you can uh, align with who you think those might be. Uh, some of them are more obvious than others. But those are going to be our characters. Our first character is going to be Ian McFellow. 
the Wizard Extraordinaire. And we're going to go look at his card right now. There's a couple things I see, see already set out on the board, which are doors. All of these are closed doors. There are eight of them on the board. You can also see many symbols on the board. In the beginning of the uh, scenario book, it does talk about what those symbols on the map do and what they represent. So we're going to get there on this pretty soon. But let's take a look at our characters very quickly, and then we'll also, while we're doing that, we'll get there med bag item and we'll reference back to the med bag uh, reference card to see what those do. Okay, here is Ian McFellow. He is going to be our first player. Now, you can see that there's a number of things going on here. Just, uh, I'll get this so you can see it. There's, he has six health. He has a quest. Die one time. You know, like uh, Gandalf, you know, he comes back. Yeah, white wizard. Yeah, all that stuff. Gandalf the Great, Gandalf the White. Yeah. He has the ability. It's a passive ability in any role. He can take eagle form. And when he gets a, a the symbol or equals blank a blink one after resolution one character on your space may blink one to go to the same space as you. That means one space over. Then he has the ability of fireball. This is an this requires an action, and you attack with two red dice. You have a range of one to four. It has kind of a that means it has like a blast radius with fire. And then if you get a lightning bolt, you also get to add a green die to it, so it can can continue to right. And then no passage. You shall not pass, right? Place a frost uh, condition token on a space 0 to 4 range away. A line of sight is not required. That's interesting. Monsters cannot leave that space. Remove the token at the end of your round. That's pretty powerful, but this requires... This is a passive. This requires 3 insanity, and this requires 5 insanity to spend. Now, for him to trigger his quest, I believe he needs 6 insanity and to die. So we, we have a couple, there's conditions to flip that over and then you become the more powerful insane version of yourself. Okay. Um, stats. And I, again, I'll just, I won't, I'm going to read it to you this time. Next time I'll do, on the rest of them, I'll just show you. Strength, agility, uh, that is imagination and wisdom. And it says disorders here, right? Schizophrenia and anxiety, neurosis. So it didn't say yet to pull, normally you set yourself up with a couple of those, but it didn't say to do that yet. So I haven't. He's got a couple of items. He's got a straight jacket. It can be upgraded with some junk. And basically it gives you a blue die to defend with. And the dice are, are, have different symbols on them. Blue die has this. It has a lot of defense symbols, as you can see. Um, and that's uh, when we are being attacked by monsters, that's what we're rolled to defend ourselves unless we get a better item. This is a basic item. And then for Ian, I had to do this, right? I mean, this is obvious. Kind of a given. It's based on your, your uh, wisdom. I gave him the spell scroll. It's got a range of 0 to 2. It's, it's a basic attack. You can see that it can be upgraded once, and it gave, basically gives you lightning bolts equal another success. That means a success. Okay, that's his stuff, and he is going to be our first player, and we're going to get this little med bag out right here, and we're going to draw a med token for him. I'm just shuffling up inside there because I don't know how well I did that when I mixed him up, and he's going to get a blue, and we'll take a look at that, what that does right now, so you have an idea as I'm passing them out. Okay, now y'all, don't put me down for my terrible cutting. Um, I am not good with scissors because I'm left-handed, and I don't know if I've ever had something that looks like left-handed scissors, not that that matters, but you can see I got a kind of jagged edge there, but I did cut them all out. Okay, meds represent various pills, tablets, and other medicines found around the hospital. Whenever you gain meds, such as the result of searching a locker, you draw one random uh, one at random from the med bag. Characters are also free to trade meds during the trade action. There's no limit to how many meds a character may carry. Okay, Meds can be spent returning the med token to the med bag to, by characters to add dice rolls of the same color. So basically, when attacking, we can add a green or red die. Now we have a blue token, so that's not going to help us, but we can do this when defending. So when defending, use a blue or brown med token to add the matching die to our roll. After rolling an additional die by using meds, there's nothing to stop a character from using more meds. So that's that's meds. So we got a blue one that's going to give us an extra blue die to defend with. All right, let's go on to our next character. Again, I think we'll experience most things as we play, but I'm just going to give you an idea. Let's first draw her med and see what she gets. Hopefully she gets a brown or red. She's a, kind of our, a fighter, right? A uh, defender as well. Now she got a green. That's okay. So we got a blue and a green so far. She has 10 health, so she's a little more healthy. Her quest, her just personal quest, is to prevent 10 damage with uh, these defense symbols. Okay? So that's what she has to do. Not take 10 damage, but prevent it. So everything she blocks. She also has a aggression and anxiety neurosis as her disorders. 
and these are her stats. So her best stat is agility, which is why I gave her one of the items I gave her. Uh, she has van braces. She automatically gets to add a defense symbol uh, to in a defense roll, so she's always going to get one. That's her passive. She's got leap as an action. She can move two, then gain an attack on the action. That's pretty pretty powerful. I like that. And then smite of Zeus. That's, again, these require insanity. She didn't have any yet, right? Attack with three red dice. Uh, it, can, it can attack in any direction. It's, uh, range zero to five, and a line of sight is required. And there's a little backstory here if, uh, if you want to read it since we're focused on the card. But here is her uh, a unique item. She has a straight jacket, but this is the other item. It's not unique, it's a basic item, but this is the one she has. Uh, it is a sling, it's zero to one range, and you may re roll one die, and it can be upgraded to uh, get an extra hit uh, when you attack. So that's Joanna Justice. Now, again, if she gets that. Defense and she has, I think it's six. I'm going to look, re re remember the rules. I think you have to have six insanity to flip the card, but that's not going to matter right now because it didn't tell us to address any of this yet. And now we have Brian Hotridge. Brian is, he's got seven health. You can see his stats here. He's got two passives. Uh, it says this, this is how we sell. Uh, it says when you gain meds, you gain one extra at any time. You can give meds to any character in a space of zero to one away from you. Uh, yay, science, draw one meg for one med token for uh, one. That's pretty funny because he's like breaking bad guy drugs. Uh, you can, for one uh, insanity, you can draw a med. Uh, his other passive is I am the danger. You gain a disorder card action cost of four in four. And that's a, a passive, so we're going to gain that, I guess. Um, yeah, and then uh, the the one who knocks uh, action uh, you get to attack with a red die zero to two range spend a med and add two successes you can max that out using it three times so let's draw his first med and let's draw his second med and I believe that because of that passive I am the danger you gain a disorder in uh, oh f you gain dis you gain disorder card action cost is four. Okay, I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that one out. i got to read that one. Okay, but anyway, uh, we're going to get a red and a red. Oh, we got two reds, so he's going to be doing some attacking. All right. And he doesn't have, he's, his unique item is a melee item. Now, he's pretty balanced on his stats, so it didn't really matter that much. But he got a, a, a melee item, which is the broken bottle, which the only ability it has is for this. Uh, if you get a lightning bolt, you get an extra success. And then lastly, we have Harmony Bishop. Her quest is to use five meds. Okay, she's, she's a pill popper. Uh, these are her stats because she's high in imagination, high in wisdom. Though I didn't have any other basic wisdom items to give her, so she did not end up with one of those, and she's only got one in each of these stats, but that's okay. She's got Sic uh, Sic uh, Sicily Sicilian Defense as her passive. When you are dealt a spawn card, reveal an additional one, choose which one to resolve, and discard the other. That's pretty powerful. Uh, castles is her second one. Switch places with a monster in um, in zero to two range, and then checkmate discards chess character. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. You tell me who that is. Uh, discard one med and add one of these. I'll have to figure out what that is to all your attacks until the end of the turn. And now she uh, it has schizophrenia and anxiety neuroses, and that is her character. Now she doesn't have anything unique. We've shown those before, so we won't show them again. By the way, this uh, this symbol that we just saw on Harmony's card is ethereal. It says when defending against an ethereal attack, target loses all shields and does not perform a defense roll. So with her checkmate ability, she can spend a med to attack as an ethereal uh, attack. It says ethereal movement, and we're not worried about that. It's on an attack called checkmate. It says discard a med to add ethereal to all your attacks until the end of the turn. So that's what that is. All right, now let's move on because we're about ready to get to the scenario and do the next thing it told us to do in this process, which is to reveal this scenario card. It says, what am I doing here? I am back in this hellish hospital. The distant cries suggest I must be. I could have sworn I made it home. Maybe it was all a dream. Maybe the only thing I can be certain of is the knowledge that I have escaped before, even if it was just in my mind. And if... And I've done done it once. I can do it again. But first, I better be. I better open these doors that keep me in here. Okay. When anyone opens a door that has a number token, one or two, on the top of it, um, I don't know that they do. Uh, it read S one A. Okay. Well, that would be basically. I don't know how you know if a door has a number two, one or two on the top of it. I'm going to check that. I don't. See 
see that in the setup. Oh, I see. Okay, I see the doors are they're labeled on the map. Let me show you. I need to put the one, the two here, so just just as a reference. And there are a number of tokens to do exactly that. There, by the way, I have a veritable ton of tokens in the game. So I will mark the map, and then we're going to get started. Okay. Well, now that we've read that. And before we get into the game, I did look through, I was just looking at how the rules are structured compared to the scenario. And it does appear that we would take our disorders in advance, right? So I, I'm going to give them their disorders. They should have those in addition to the scenario because when you look it up before it says stop and go to the introductory scenario, it tells you functionally how to set up. And the, for in that setup, it does say to take your disorders. So uh, I am going to draw from the disorder deck. First off, I need a... Uh, a schizophrenia and anxiety neurosis for, for um, our good old friend Ian McFellows. So let's get those two decks out and take a look at that. Okay, here is, uh, we'll do the schizophrenia first. Here's the schizophrenia disorders. And we're going to give them a shuffle and pick one of those. This is the deck here. I'd like to make sure we get them really shuffled up because I didn't shuffle them that well when I first opened the game. But uh, we'll do another cut. That should be good. What do we get? We get multiple symptoms. Okay, now this this here means that it's going to require four times. When we use it, it's got a cooldown timer. It actually uses one action point to be active. It says make one weapon upgrade without spending any gear or restore five health to a character in a zero or three um, in zero to three range or draw an equipment card. So this is an active card that we can use to do that, and that is his uh, schizophrenia disorder, multiple symptoms. So he's got a bunch of little things going on and allows him to do a bunch of stuff too. Now we don't have any uh, junk to be able to upgrade our gear yet, so not so good, but we'll get there, right? And then his anxiety neurosis. Let's see what he's got on this one. And we'll do the same for the other characters. This, this uh, game can be a little bit of a space hog just so you're aware. And uh, yeah, so let's see what we got going on here. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, outburst, so he's prone to outburst. This takes three time. It's AP zero, so it is active. It says any non-boss monsters in your space may be moved one space. Spend one insanity to reduce outburst by one. So we can speed up the time in which we have that. So those are the two that Ian has. Let's go on to Joanna. Joanna has the Anxiety Neurosis deck, so we'll keep that one around. And then she also has Aggression Disorder. So we're going to get uh, that first and give her an Aggression Disorder and a Anxiety Neurosis. See what uh, kind of powers this gives her. Let's see if we can get uh, something really good for fighting out of this, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. Okay. Anyway, shuffle one away like a madman. There we go. We'll cut it one more time. See what we get. Weapon throw. Well, there you go. She has a sling. I don't know if that's important or not. It uh, cooldown on this is only two. It takes one AP, and it, it's a weapon attack. It says add a green die and zero to two range to weapon attack. Spend one insanity. Add a green die. So, well, this is cool. We can use this as an action, or one of our action points to throw a weapon. We could take the sling then, and I guess make it give it another green die. Well, it's yeah, that's it's interesting. We'll have to see how that plays out. Okay. And then we have her anxiety neurosis that we have to give her. And again, this is a this game's a bit of a table hog, especially with the characters, because you're gonna end up with more cards and stuff, and you have to determine what's equipped and not equipped. I may just put them in a stack and pull them out when we're playing that character, but sometimes their abilities might become active on other players' turns. Hard to say. Let's see. Avoidant Disorder. So this is, takes three time, or actually three cooldown. No AP. It's a defense. Use before monsters attack to ignore it. Just ignore the attack. Or we can spend one sanity to move one with uh, no line, no sight. So, okay, that that's interesting for her. She does like to stop damage, though, but that's that's actually pretty interesting for her. And I like the, how thematic these are in regards to... The character's actions. I gotta move some stuff around and make sure we have enough space for all of this. Okay, now we're gonna get to Brian. Brian has an anxiety neurosis as well, and also schizophrenia. So we're gonna get, we'll just do the anxiety neurosis out here. See what we get. We get violent impulse. That suits his character, I think. A three cooldown, no AP, it's a defense, add a blue die, lightning bolts, 
I don't know what that symbol is. I have a feeling it has something to do with punching. To every defense until the end of the round. So you get to like maybe retaliate or something like that. We shall see. And then he has a schizophrenia disorder. So let's see what that gives him. You know what I might, might do is just put these kind of around the characters a bit to get to, so we don't have too much space required for each of the characters. We'll see. Put their gear up. Anyway, it's, I've gotta, I'm going to have to reorganize as I get through this because it's taken up a lot more space to have these out and they're going to get more of them. So anyway, we'll see how this plays. Okay, let's go. Uh, lured by voices. Three cooldown. Uh, AP0. Active. Draw a spawn card. Blink to the nearest spawn point course of the corresponding color. If an event reshuffle um, or reshuffle is drawn, you may choose which color to blink to. So this allows you kind of teleport, I guess. Interesting. Okay, well, then we're going to go on, lastly, to Harmony. He also has a schizophrenia disorder. We'll give that to her. And I think I've shuffled this enough. So, so she has cold water therapy. Uh, three cooldown. AP0, it's active. It looks like a big massive attack. Wow, okay, so <laughs> it's a big whopping attack is what it is. So we'll put that right there. And then her other one is um, anxiety neurosis. So we, didn't, we don't have oh, any OCD or uh, uh, aggression disorders. Oh, just one aggression disorder, which was Joanna Justice. We'll see how this goes, though. Okay, and then she gets stress relief. This cool down of two. Zero AP active. Restore one health to yourself. Spend one ma uh, insanity instead to restore one health to all characters in zero to one. A healer. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. We'll take it. Now, you know, again, you could apply most of these abilities just as abilities in a fantasy type game, but that's not what this does. So, <laughs> there we go. Now that we've done that, we're going to get to taking our turns. I'm going to take one turn. And this, we're at a point where we can do that now, and some things are going to happen. We did just read the First Blood thing, and now we're going to take some actions and see what we're going to do. And I have a feeling this is going to populate the board a little more. We'll see. But we're going first with Ian McFellows. Okay, so here's the board. we got the one and two out. Remember, this is north, so this is the setup of the board going this way. We're going to start with Ian McFellows. Now, he's got three actions, right? And for his first of three actions, I'm going to remember to check his item, his gear and stuff now as I play. Uh, he is going to take a move action first, which will be to open the door and to step out into the hallway. So he's like, oh, there's this floaty, misty thing. We'll see what happens. Yada, yada. It's crazy times, right? Anyway, uh, he is then going to uh, open that door right there. Let's see what that does. So he's going to take a second movement action. And he's going to open this door number two. Now, it says, as soon as we did that... Uh, we should go here to S1A, the first blood. All right, here we are, S1A, the first blood. From the Misto corridor, you open the door to another foggy corridor. The door must have been soundproofed, as now the faint yelling you could previously hear has turned into a clear symphony of screams, pain howls, and anguish weeps. Weeping. This place is eerily familiar, yet disturbingly different. You can't be certain if you've ever been here or just somewhere like it. But that can't be right. Surely there can be no other place like this. Surely a just universe would not allow it. Forcing yourself out of your reverie, you realize that the corridor beyond contains shapes moving in the mist. Moving. Maybe lumbering or prowling would be a better description, as something about their movements suggests a lurking danger. Maybe you should find something with which to defend yourself by before they know it's too late. As one of the shadows spins around towards you, malevolent eyes glowing red through the fog, you have no time to arm yourself, no time to even curse or mutter a silent prayer. As it leaps towards you, you prepare to fight for your life. Do not remove any of the tokens and minis already on the board, but place locker tokens and monster miniatures as shown in the diagram. Well, let's do some filming magic and bam! Here we are, monsters populated. <laughs> I don't know. So I didn't realize the setup of this when I chose to open this door, but this is an orderly. Let me put that on the screen for you right now. And the orderly is what we call, I guess what they kind of call a basic elite monster. It is elite, meaning it's nastier than normal. And that it is. So we're going to have to take on, of course, the uh, the orderly elite monster and, the, and uh, see what we do there. Now, as you can see, he's got various num levels of attack. 
And these are not good, right? So uh, we're going to have to try and take him on. Now, what can Ian do? Let's look at Ian's stuff to see what Ian can do to take his next action. So, so far, he's taken two actions. He's got one movement point. I could move away, lure him in. Let me see. They got a movement of one. Wouldn't be such a bad idea. Or I can attack him at range and let him come to us. Hmm. I'm not sure. Well, clearly, we need Joanna to get out here and defend our our. our Good old uh, magic user or wizard, Ian McFellow. Let's see if he can do something there. Now, the only the only attack he could possibly do right now, I guess, would be this one, his spell scroll. He's got his multiple symptoms, but again, well, he can do that. It says make one weapon upgrade. No, we did. We just yeah, we're not doing that yet. But the weapon upgrade basically just gives us. I don't want to upgrade this. I don't want to do it on that. That's that's kind of a a waste, I think. Restore or restore five health to a character. That's all good. His outburst thing. Any Naha boss monster or on your space, maybe moved. That's very powerful. We'll leave that alone. So basically, all he can do right now is use his spell scroll on that guy. Spell scroll is driven by our uh, wisdom, which is going to give us three uh, green dice basically to attack with. Huh. Well, I think that's what we're going to have to do. I can't think. I'm looking just to see if there's anything else that we can do. Now, in defense, the orderly is going to have two blue dice. And a and he, al he already has, as you can see, already has a an automatic shield on his defense. And that's everything under the shield symbol there. Now, he also has a lightning bolt. If he gets a lightning bolt, he reflects damage. He can put one damage back on Ian McFellow. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but we'll have to see. I mean, his chance of killing the guy is very, very slim. His ch chance of maybe getting a hit on it, hmm, not so bad. We'll have to see how this goes. Let's check it out and see if Ian can use his spell scroll, scroll to zap the orderly before the orderly gets to him. Okay, here we go. That's our dice pool right there. These spikes are hits, um, and defenses are what they are. Now there's also a madness symbol on here. That's that right there. You can see that on the blue dice and on the green dice. Now, if they come up on the blue dice, it really doesn't matter because that those are the, the orderly's defense dice, but it does matter for Ian uh, on the green dice. Let's see what he can get here. Well, that was really bad. Um, we got one hit and it defended one, so it's basically a wash. I guess the good news is it didn't reflect any of that damage back at him, so there's that. Now, um, since I don't have any any insanity right now, I can't like cast the fireball or anything. That's all I could really do. And that was his, let me see, that was his third action. So he's um, he's basically done. Wow, that was not very, very good for him, was it? Well, let's see if we can get Joanna in on the action, maybe, or some of the other characters to help with this orderly, because I think the orderly is going to be really nasty for us. But let's get it done. Okay, let's take Joanna's turn now. Joanna Justice, she's going to take her first action, which is going to be to open her door. Now, monsters can go, I know that monsters can go through doors. So, it, but I believe that she is going to need to help with the orderly. The orderly is really, really nasty. So, for her, her first action, she opened the door and moved. That's action number one. Action number two is going to be to go here. She has a sling, so she does not need to go any further. And she'll be able to attack with that sling. That sling is an agility attack. So, the, her agility is three. That's good. So, she's going to have a few green dice to, to roll there. Three of them, basically. Same as Ian did against the uh, orderly. Um, and does she have any... Uh, let's see. Her weapon throw... She The weapon throw might be better. That would give her a fourth green die, right? I mean, she can throw a sling. <laughs> it doesn't say you don't get to keep the weapon, right? It just says weapon throw, action points one, weapon attack, add a, add a green die and a zero to two range to weapon attack okay uh depends uh spend one insanity add a green die so that would give her i guess that would give her four green dice in that attack and it would put two cool down on that that means it would take a little while for her to cool that down and use it again huh that, that might be i if i'm i mean i have to assume that the if this card meant for you to get rid of your weapon it would tell you remember it's blind playthrough well, i'm learning as i go I would think if it was meant to get rid of your weapon, weapon throw, it would do that. But remember, we're operating under the sense that we might be delusional. So it's very possible for her to throw her sling and get it back. And it also doesn't say I can't use it with a, a weapon that already has range. So uh, I think it's a way... It's, I mean, it cost me two times, so I think we're going to do that. Okay, so how does this look? We're going to put two time tokens right here on 
this ability, which means you're going to get to add, have a fourth green die. And actually, this is interesting. Do I? Yeah, I do want her in there because I want her to be able to defend Ian McFellows. I was going to say, with that ability, I could have just stepped out here and threw it at him. But uh, let me show what I'm talking about. Since the weapon throw adds an additional range, I could have done it from here. But that's okay. I think it's worthwhile that we are doing this from uh, from there so that she can defend him. And let's get those dice out and make the attack. I guess this implies that she put an extra oomph into throwing that sling stone, right? She threw it, she helped it along with a, a bigger, more powerful attack against the orderly. Now again, the orderly's got two blue dice and a, a, and a bonus defense. So he, we gotta get through probably three hits or three shields. No, okay, that's okay. This means nothing, I believe. I'll check that. However, look at this, we got one hit so two defense, basically two defense. We've got one defense there. We got uh, two um, successes there and a lightning bolt. The lightning bolt with the, the sling does not do anything because she hasn't upgraded it yet. So and then we got a madness. So so far she's not doing any damage, but she does get two madness out of it. Man, we just can't seem to hit hurt this guy. So she goes out and goes. Whoo, whoo, whoo. That's her. Remember, this is her her third action. So that's all she's going to be able to do too. But she does get two Madness, which could fuel her Van Braces and add a defense if she needs to. Actually, it's a passive. Fuel her Leap Brother, which is, means move two, then gain an attack on an, on an uh, gain an attack action. So we could probably do that in the next turn because she will have the Madness to, to Insanity points to do that. Um, and I think we've done what she can do. This is not going well. We are just basically throwing stuff at this orderly who's just basically bouncing it off. That's pretty bad. Now these count as successes when you're doing an imagination check or some other checks that don't require uh, like combat or defense. So okay, let's take, let's uh, finish up her turn and begin, again because of her dice rolls she gets two insanity to work with now. So she's getting a little crazier. She gets out here and sees this horrible, disformed, disfigured, uh, demonic orderly coming at her. Right? It's pretty bad. All right, but that is her entire turn. So now we're going to go to Brian Hotridge. So then we're going to send Brian in the other direction. I mean, we've got we're going to have at least two characters on this orderly. Maybe uh, even have Harmony help out there. I'm not sure. So it looks like we might need some healing there. But Brian is going to step out, open the door here, and step out to the hallway with his companions. Now the people he's in group therapy with, and for his his uh, second action, he will open the door where he sees this uh, this uh, hellhound out there. Here's the hellhound for you to look at. And then he's going to use his second move to step out there where he will get his third action as an attack. Now, there's a much better chance we're going to take out this, this hellhound over the orderly, which would be great. So let's get his dice pulled together. He's using, unfortunately, he's not as strong at this as the other characters. So he's going to be using his broken glass. And with the broken glass, basically without an upgrade, uh, it's just going to be... Um, a uh, simple roll, die roll of two because his strength is two. So he's got two green dice versus the the hellhound's one defense die. Now, if the if the hellhound does uh, get that lightning bolt, it is going to do something. Let me check the rules on that just to see what it says what that symbol is on the hellhound's die. So while if the hellhound rolls a lightning bolt, he dodges, meaning that the entire attack is not effective. Now, I do have a couple of things. Let's see. He's got his violent impulse. He can put a time on that and add a blue die. Um, that's defensive, so that's not going to help us. We just got. We also, if we get a lightning bolt, it does give us a, give us an extra hit. I can use the pills. Remember, he's a, he gets a lot of pills. I can actually do a lot with pills here. So he's going to use some meds. That means that med's going to go back in the bag. That's a red thing, so he's going to get to add a red die. I want to kill this dog if I can. So let's see if we can get it done. Hopefully the dog does not dodge. The dog didn't even defend. Look at that. That's Now we overkill. Not only did we get the lightning bolt, which means one, two, three, four, five, five hits on the hellhound there. The hellhound has a whopping... Um, uh, one health. So it is gone. Now we didn't get any madness out of that, but we do get a madness because we killed something. It's an insanity point. I think we also get some junk. I'm going to check that out. Okay, so the answer is no. He does get the mad, the one insanity for the attack for killing the monster, but he only gets the extra junk if it's an elite monster. So he doesn't get that. He doesn't get the junk to be able to use it because he can do a lot with stuff. Like, you know, like right now he can actually get an extra med. That med was very helpful. It, it, it uh, it, we didn't need it in the end, but it was good to get rid of the Hellhound, so it is gone from the board. 
Um, and that is, let me see, that was, let me see, he opened the door, stepped out, stepped into the hallway with the monster and attacked. So that's all of his actions right there. He is done with his turn. We're going to go on to Harmony now. Now, Harmony has a pretty good area of effect ability, but uh, I don't think it's going to be good enough to take on this, uh, this guy. So I think what we're going to do, unfortunately, um, she's in her room right now, and I'm debating if she even attacks. We might leave the orderly to be dealt with by Ian and Joanna Justice uh, and have Brian and Harmony start to move around the board some and get some, some stuff and things that maybe we can do some more with. So, uh, you know, I, would have, I was planning, to, I said I'd use her as a backup if I needed to go after the Hellhound one more time, but we got the Hellhound beat already. She is, however, a healer, so I don't know how far away I would want her from uh, the team because she can do the stress relief and restore health to herself and then also spend a madness, but she's got to get some insanity to be able to do this. So part of us feel, part of me feels we do need to attack to be able to accomplish this. Maybe she goes at the orderly now, and, but she's going to have to get into space because she has a broken glass. Now the broken glass is a little better, kind of, than the sling or the spell scroll because uh, it does have uh, an ability to bump up the damage by one. We'll have to see. Let's let's go back to the board and start with Harmony's actions. By the way, i got to keep track of quests too, and Brian's quest is to gain 10 meds total, including the ones from setup. So he's already got two, so he only needs eight more. He's got to gain some more meds. But we're going to take Harmony's turn. She's here, so she's going to open her door for one action movement point, move out for a second movement point. This door's open, so she can move into the space with the orderly and attack it, or we can not do that. I'm debating. Uh, I mean, we've got monsters all around. They're going to come at us, that's for sure. They're not super fast. The state troopers only have one movement, but the dog over there has two, so the dog can get to the orderly space, but not into the room yet. So I think what we'll do with her is... Hmm... I'm worried about getting damaged. This guy's tough. He's really nasty for us to have to fight at the beginning. He's, we're not very good yet. But I do think she's going to go... We got these two here. She'll go one, two... He's got meds. He can add to defense dice and everything, so we're okay there. That was her second action. And for her third action, if she moves in here, she's going to have to take on... That. That's okay, though. She's going to move here for an action point. I think she can... I'm going to look it up, but I believe it's an action point to then... Check that out. Take action on the the uh, uh, not chest or whatever they call them there um, locker. So she needs a full on action point. So that is going to be the end of her turn right there. She's going to have to fight the the uh, state trooper that comes into her space. However, he's not that bad. So I think she can handle him. We'll see. Maybe not. But we are going to get in now to the enemy's phase, I believe. I think there's a little bit of a cleanup. I'm going to look at the phase, the turn order again, and see where we're at. We'll wrap this that up, and then that'll be the end of this video. And we'll continue on with our second turn in the next video. Okay, well, the enemy phase goes like this. First, we do the hunt phase. That would be the boss monster. However, there is no boss monster yet. So we're going to skip the hunt phase and the boss monster movement phase. There's no boss monster on the board. And we're going to go to our basic and elite monster movement. Now, remember, they're going to move before they do their attack. So we're going to uh, move, then spawn, and then we're going to move. We're going to wrap that up. So um, let's see here. We got some movement to go first. I think we'll go front to back here. So he's got a movement. The the trooper has a movement, or the orderly rather has a movement of one. So he's going to move in there with Ian and Joanna. Uh, the state trooper has a movement of one as well. So he's just going to move here. The Hellhound has a movement of two, so it's, it takes the shortest path to the character, so it's going to go right there. So we're in a, you can see we're in a spot of trouble. Uh, this one is going to move to uh, attack him. Now, you know what? He would have moved there because this was a shorter path to a character, so he would have moved there, and he moved in to take on our character there. The next part that goes, I'm going to show you this on the reference sheet, the handy dandy reference sheet that I tore out of the book. Not very well. I cut it, but I just didn't cut it well. It says, okay, new monsters appear. See, S1RC12. So as you can see, all these great reference sheets, and this is so different than the first game where you just kind of had to guess at some things. But uh, I do like it. Before we get on to that, I did notice that in following these instructions down here, I did everything right except for one small thing. I need to reveal story event uh, S1EC2 replacing s one EC1, which is this one. This is the one we originally had, so we're going to replace it with number two and see what that says. This is story event card replaces S1 EC1. That's correct. When any character first wants to attack a monster, uh-oh, should have done this, huh? 
No, I didn't. We'll have to catch up on that. Uh, they must be on the same space or within their weapons range. Okay, well, we did do that. So we actually did that a couple times. When a character on a space with a locker first wants to search it, we haven't done that yet. After all lockers have been searched, go there. After the character's action phase ends, so all characters have done their actions, read this. Um, if... Sorry, I mean when a character dies, read this. Okay, so we got the kiss. I got a little catching up to do. Got a lot of order here. Sorry, I, I missed that one little statement in there that said to replace the event card. So we're going to read this new event. Um, and as I did all this without reading it to you. I just went through it and said, okay, I, I know how to do the dice. I got that down. I figured this out. And uh, we'll move on. So, um, yes, yeah, so for example, if you're rolling a defense die and roll a star, then it is ignored. If you roll that then, and that, then it's a defense and a lightning might or may or may not depending on to help you depending on what you do but i shouldn't have moved the monsters quite yet let's go read if it bleeds we can kill it okay your eyes refuse to take in all the details of the malformed abomination confronting you you don't need to know the details don't need to know how it came to be don't need to know its motivation you just need to know that it can be defeated Share the reference card SR, S1 RC6, Attacking Monsters, and 7. I've done that. Understanding Weapon Cards, I've already read through that. An attack action looks, lets a character attack a monster that is in the same space or within their attack range and line of sight. Okay, we did that already. We performed an attack, select the dice, we did that. So we, we've seen all of this so far, nothing unusual. Additional dice effects, right? All dice are rolled at once. Character gains an insanity token. For each token, yeah, okay, we've done all of this. So far, so far we're okay. <laughs> and nothing has happened that would have changed the outcome of where we're at. But we'll keep reading here. It says the number of successes. If your character defeats a monster, remove the monster mini from the board. You gain an insanity token for killing it. And if it's an elite monster, you gain junk. So, okay, so, so far we did everything right. A Guide to the Various Symbols is on S1RC. This is a really, really good tutorial, by the way. I'm impressed. Like I said, the first set of rules for the first rendition of this game left something to be desired, but this is actually quite clear. I just need to pay attention. But the good news is that nothing changed the outcome of what we did. And then the next thing we have to do is when we explore a locker, we'll go to S S1C. That's not a knife. This is a knife. And see what that does for us. But So we're back to spawning now. But wait, didn't it say before we take our, our turn, we're going to do something else? Uh, when After the character's actions phase ends, so all characters that have done their actions go to S1E. Okay, so we need to go to S1E real quick and do this before anything happens. Um, well, where is S1E? Oh, here. Here it is, right here. So it's interesting. We haven't done S1D yet. Hmm. Where's S1D? Oh, after we have searched a locker. So we killed a monster before we searched a locker. We ended our phase before we searched a locker, too. Maybe they're expecting us to be able to search a locker faster. But here's us when he, Mommy always said there were no monsters, but there are! God knows how many of these beasts are out there, roaming the corridors and halls, waiting to attack. It sounds like maybe 10, 20, more! And that's just the ones close enough and noisy enough to be heard. Add the recreation garden and common area maps, tiles to the board below. Well, there we go. Below the isolation ward, along... Oh, I see how that's going to go. Okay. I think... Uh, along with tokens and minis as shown below. Okay, now that we have monsters on the board, we need to update the round sequence to let them move and attack. Yes, I know this is dangerous, but let's give them a chance. Plus, place, replace reference card S1RC2 with it. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Also, the reference cards S1RC14 and S1RC9, which describe the monster cards and how the monsters attack. Um, monsters can have a big effect on the character's movement. Characters cannot usually move from a space containing a monster. So before I move those monsters to where I move them to, we're going to do some other things. There's also talks about fleeing. We'll, we'll figure that out too. And the characters can use stealth, but we don't have that. And blink as well, but we don't have that quite. Well, we do have that. But we're going to have to take this off the board and set up the other two different um, boards with us. So let's get that done. Okay, good news, bad news here. So everything's on the board. The good news is we're not. I just looked at the reference card in the tutorial. We're not going to be spawning yet. I'm getting ahead of myself there. We are not going to spawn. Let me show you that. Uh, because we're moving from SR, S1, S1RC2A to here. So SR, S1RC2B. Okay, so we've done all of this now. Now we go to the monster face. Basic and elite 
monsters move, basic and elite monsters attack. So we do have some more movement to do because monsters are going to be coming towards us from these other hallways. Um, and it doesn't say only the monster. I, I should just double check that on their space. All basic and elite monsters perform their move from SR S1 RC9. Let me. I'm going to look at S1 RC9 to see if monsters on other tiles move as well. Yes, it appears it does not matter in this particular scenario that they are um, on different tiles. So that means we'll start with this big guy. He's just going to move one. Um, in fact, the only ones that don't move one of the dogs. So we'll move all these guys first. He moves one closer. He's going to move one closer. The dog will move out to the hallway, one and then two into here. This dog will move one, two to here. So we know we have some people coming. The alarm bells are going off. Some terrible things are happening. But we do have to now do the next part of that. Let's take a look at this. And that is our uh, this basic elite monster attack phase, which we are at right now. It says, in order of the player's choosing, every basic and elite monster with a character on the same space or within range of its attack will attack the character. If there are multiple characters, a monster could, could attack, then pick the one with the least remaining health. Okay, so they're going to try and attack. In, in the case of the area with Ian and Joanna, they're going to attack Ian. This is get the green dice. Okay, to, to defend, you may use equipment cards marked armor from the current location. We got that. Take the defense dice. Got that. Got meds. Add blue dice. Yeah, okay, we're good to go. We're ready to do this. All right, let's go see what kind of fights we're going to have. I think we're going to start with... Uh, the big fight in the middle and then we'll take the other two. So we'll start with the big bad orderly. He has got an attack dice uh, It's a zero to one range too So he could have done this regardless, but he's got one blue or one red and one green attack die Right now Ian McFellows has one blue die and that's who he's going to attack because he's going to, if there's multiple targets He's going to attack the one with the least health uh, Ian has uh, six and Joanna has ten now um, Joanna does have Try to think if she has anything she could do. She does not. Well, she could do her leap, but that's not going to help. So not have anything she can do right now that's going to be of use to Ian. Um, let me look at Ian's stuff. He's got outburst. He's also got the multiple symptoms. He, I mean, he basically has his straight jacket. So he's got this one blue defense die and a pill, and he's going to use the darn pill because, well, actually, he wants to die. He's not going to use the darn pill. First time he dies, he's good, but I think he needs... I'm going to have to look that up. I, I hope I'm not selling myself short here, but I think I'm just going to let him try and suck it up. Let's see what he gets here. Well, look at that. That was beautiful. Okay, so his defense is just one blue die. So he got two shields, and then it's two blocked two hits, but he only took one. So he actually blocked the, def the attack of the orderly, and the orderly doesn't have any other abilities. If the order orderly had gotten a lightning bolt, he would have gotten another hit. Now we're going to go to the Hellhound. The Hellhound has two green dice. To attack with and he is again is going to attack Ian um, there's no way for Joanna to intervene yet I don't think so anyway we're gonna do this he's got this part right here so this is not likely to kill him I suppose it might two green dice you never know oh man he blocked nothing and got hit twice so he's gonna take two hits there I think we're just gonna let that happen so he's going to take these are the hit tokens I'm gonna to take two of those and put him on his character sheet he's now down to four health but that was the end of that attack now what do we got next? We got the trooper over here. We haven't really looked at the trooper, but he, let me put him up on screen. He is going to do um, a. He's going to use two green dice versus our one blue for uh, Brian Hotridge. Now he does have his violent impulses. He can add a blue and lightning bolts give him a fist symbol, which we'll have to look at what those are. Do I use that now against this guy and try and knock him down? The the, or, the state trooper also has some special uh, abilities as well. He's got this, so I need to look up what those symbols are real quick. I'm not used to them yet. Okay, let's look at these symbols on the order on the State Trooper's card now. If he gets a lightning bolt, he is going to get this infection. Always affects a given attribute, though sometimes may be at the player's choice with a minus one penalty. Place a attribute disc de uh, decrease token on the character's card. So it's going to be strength, because that's what it shows there. So it's, it's going to take an attribute hit to his strength, for Ian, or for Brian, uh, that does matter. It does matter. And then uh, also Brian's ability, if we choose to use that uh, ability he has, has the fist. I'm looking for the fist right now. There it is. Counterattack after being attacked, perform an, at perform an attack. I think we're going to do that for sure. So 
Ian, uh, Brian rather, is going to use his Violent Impulse. It costs nothing, it's defensive. It's going to add another blue die, and with a Lightning Bolt, we're going to get to counter attack. But that means that we're going to put three tokens, time tokens, down on that. We're going to get those out right here. They look like, get the third one, they look like so. And those are going on the Violent Impulse card. So we were going to get to take one off at the beginning of each turn. Okay, and then we're going to roll our dice. Let's check that out. We got our two blue dice here and our two green dice. Let's hope that uh, Brian gets lucky here. Uh, wow, did he ever. Uh, the, he got three hits, but he got two hits in the line. So he's going to take a damage. He's going to take one damage. Or does he? Let's just double check. Uh, yeah, he has. He could do yay science and draw uh, uh, medicine, but we're not going to do that. We're just using his violent impulse. Yeah, so he is going to take a damage. So we'll take one damage for Ian, but he's going to get to counterattack because he got the lightning bolt symbol on there. So he's going to can't get to counterattack against the trooper with his bottle, but he's down to six health. This could be deadly. All right, well, let's now do that counterattack. So he didn't suffer any strength losses from the infection, so he's got two strength dice. Um, and uh, his bottle gets, um, gets a bonus hit on a lightning bolt. The uh, trooper has one brown and one blue defense dice. Wow, that's actually better, I think, isn't it? Yeah, so one brown and one blue defense dice. So hopefully we get through and do some damage. He only takes one hit, though. So if we get through, we kill him. Let's see. We get. Now, defensively, that's it for him. So, oh, we did not do that well. We got... He's going to get another madness. He got two hits. Well, actually, we did fine. I think we got him, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Look at that. So we got two hits. One of those goes away. The lightning bolt means nothing on this die for the trooper. No special ability there. Uh, we also, on our die, got a, uh, uh, another madness, another insanity point. We'll get, grab that for good old Brian. And there we go. So now he's got two. And he killed the trooper, which means he's going to get another one. Now, the trooper's not elite or anything, so um, that's not going to help him at all. So we got two. He's now up to three. He can do his big ability, which is the one who knows. Um, anyway, that's the end of that attack. Good job, Brian. He took the trooper off the board. Boom. Guy's gone. Now, again, not an elite trooper, not, a, not an elite guy, so it doesn't give him any uh, junk to spend, which sucks because I wish he did have some of that. That would be great. Uh, but... He does have now three insanity and a red token still. He has taken a point of damage. Okay, next, last up we have right here, we have good old Harmony. She's uh, dealing with a trooper as well who's going to attack her. I'm looking at her stuff. She's just got her basic armor, the straight jacket right now. And I'm looking at stress relief doesn't help in combat. Her cold water therapy is a massive area effect attack. She's got no madness, so she does have her Sicilian defense when you are dealt a spawn card, we don't we don't do spawn cards right now, so we're okay there. So it's just going to be uh, for the attack from the trooper. It's going to be two green dice versus her one blue die. She is likely to take some damage here. Hopefully not too much. All right. Uh, well, she took one point. We, uh, she, she took two from the green die from the trooper. She defended against one, so she took one point of damage. She is now at five, and that is going to mark the end of our time with this. I guess I could have used this brown die to attack next turn. She hasn't attacked yet, so she's going to try and kill that trooper. That will be very useful for us, but she hasn't done it yet. All right, well, in the meantime, we're going to end it right there, I think. That is a good place to end our scenario for the moment. Um, pretty cool so far. Tell me what you think. I think there's a lot of great stuff in this game that's, that's showing me what a good dungeon crawler it is, if nothing else. Um, and we have a lot of stuff going on the board. Now, again, this is going to ease us into uh, a variety of things like the bosses and stuff like that. And I, I got to make sure not to get ahead of the scenario and try and apply the rules that I know exist, you know, like the spawning and things like that. We're not doing that quite yet. So we're not spawning monsters on the board, but I have a feeling that's coming soon. So in the next maintenance phase, we're going to, we will be passing the first player token to Joanna and everybody who used something that required time will get to take some time off of that ability. And, uh, and that's it. That's what we'll do. So we'll see you in the next one. Let me tell, let me ask you though, what you think of the game and what you think of the content, like the, or the theming of the game. Is this something that's, that you're okay with? How do you feel about it? Do you feel that this is in any way, um, 
demeaning or, or marginalizing any people that have mental illness um, any more or less than I guess the other things we watch. But I guess maybe does it do that? I, I still debate that. Like if I, you know, again, when you're playing games, know your audience. You know, I mean, if you're going to a game and you know somebody there has been suffering from depression or anxiety or has a severe OCD or something, don't bring this game. <laughs> you know, it's just that simple, right? So this wouldn't be the game that hits the table. It would be something else. You know, there's plenty of other dungeon crawlers if you want to do a dungeon crawl uh, that don't deal with things of this nature. So, uh, you know, that's that would be my advice to you around this game. But I'd like to hear what you think about it. So please let me know. And I will talk to you in the next video of this or something else, depending on what you're watching. And I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Take care.